<laughs> Guys, it is great to see everybody here. It is also great to see everybody here for four years. Today we're going to be doing something completely interactive. How many of you guys have computers with you? If you do, please take them out. I want you guys, please, to go to teachercast.net slash mapcom. We're going to do things a little bit differently. This is not my presentation, ladies and gentlemen. This is our presentation. In the world of education, we have this saying. The saying is, the smartest person is the room. You are all part of their room today. Teachercast.net slash MapCon. It's going to take you to this website. All I want you to do right here is put your name, email, and tell me that you're a podcaster. And it's going to take you to a fantastic spot. That's, again, Teachercast.net slash MapCon. It's going to take you to this page here. This is what we call our show notes page, ladies and gentlemen. And on here is a link that actually opens up this spreadsheet. Today we're going to be talking about 10 suggestions for your web for your web website redesign. How many of you guys have a website? <laughs> What's more important, your podcast or your website? Website. Your website. Okay. Do you know why? Google doesn't listen. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Google doesn't listen. What I want you guys to do is, while we're talking here, I'm going to try to go through this quickly to save some time, because I want to do Q&A for this. I want you guys to spend the time filling this out. For each of the things that we're going to talk about today, I have a tab at the bottom. So on the first sheet, please fill out who you are. This is the brag sheet. Every tab, I want you guys to give your links, your resources. At the end of this, see, this is what happens when school gives you Monday and Tuesday off. I'm going to take everybody's stuff. I'm going to put it into a big infographic. I'm going to send it out to you. So that way we all can benefit from each other's knowledge. Does that sound pretty cool? Yeah. yeah. Teachercast.net slash MapCon. Here's the deal. My name is Jeff Bradbury. I am an educator. I am also the father of three. I now live in North Jersey. Yes, that means there are bears in my front yard. Seven years ago, I decided that I couldn't sleep, so I created a little website. Would you like to see what that website looks like? Yes. Yeah. Sucks, doesn't it? This is the first website that we came up with on 2000, July 11, 2011. I thought I was hot stuff. The idea was simple. Let's see if we can recreate an iPhone screen but do it on a website. So notice everything on here is a simple, big, huge button and clicks. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Nah, it didn't work too well. But this was cutting edge technology in 2011. And then I grew up a little bit. You wanna see the next version of this? <laughs> so now we got a little bit more. Notice the sidebar, everybody. Ooh, sidebars. We got a little thing. Hey, look, we have a subscribe button here. Woo! So we had a few more moments going through here. We then went to this looking website. Notice the sidebar gets a little easier. I now have a calendar of all of my stuff. You can see when you can subscribe to my shows. But the problem that we were getting into here was, well, let me ask you this. How many of you guys like to do websites? I love doing websites. I learned about this program called WordPress. I learned about this thing called a subdomain where you can actually take another WordPress website and create another site out of it. Then my host, and we're talking about this soon, my host said, you can do unlimited subdomains. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So behind each of these buttons, <laughs> I created TeacherCast as 25 websites. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, don't do that. But I had podcast.teachercast.net, I had blog.teachercast.net, I had shop.teachercast.net, and yes, for those who know me, I had edutriplets.teachercast.net. They had their own work website. I was going to do the live birth, but blab shut down. So we don't have that at this moment here. But this was actually 25 websites. Is that good for SEO? No. no. So we had to start to learn a few things. I had a friend sit me down, smacked me, and said, you need to make your octopus look like a fish. So this was the next version. This actually turned into two websites, one with all teacher cast, and then I had a separate WordPress website for the Jeff stuff. And at that point in time, I was trying to come up with like, all right, am I teacher cast? Am I Jeff? Am I, is teacher cast Jeff? What, where's this, like, how many of you guys are like, well, am I the podcast or am I me that does the podcast? Come on, it's okay, you can write it in the spreadsheet, it's all there. So time went through with all this, 
and then I came to MathCon, and I started to learn. And I met the super Joe Pardo, and I met the wonderful Jessica Kupperman, and I met the guys from podcast websites, and we decided to get together and we decided to do something wonderful, and that's when this popped out, and we decided to launch this this year. So, what did we do with all of this? We took this, and if you notice, there is teacher cast on one side, Jeff on the top. You notice about those other things. I didn't actually have my name on my website. It actually took me seven years to put my name on my website. Because in my world, as an educator, it's the students first and we're back here. So for me, this is a huge, like to put, that, that's like a huge thing. And so now we're looking at the, the way that the website looks and it, it's pretty darn cool. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more about this as we go through here. But my goodness, folks, who wants to talk about redesigning their websites? I want you to think about what are some of the things that you think about when designing the websites? What's the first thing that we think about when redesigning our website? Anybody? Content. Your home page. Content, I heard. What? Home page. Home page. What? Banner. No? Okay, banner? Right. Okay, here's the, here's the thing. You're all wrong. <laughs> the first thing you should be thinking about when redesigning your website. So where's the piece of paper? Every time I design a website, it starts on paper. If you're looking right now around the people who have notepads, they can do anything they want. They can draw, they can doodle, they can put a square, put an X through it and say, graphic to come in later. But if, as soon as you put a computer in front of you, you're locked into your keyboard, mouse, screen, WordPress, posts. <laughs> but as soon as we do this, on paper, we have the opportunity to put what down? Anything. If you start with the theme, you're locked into the theme. If you start with the banner, you're locked into the banner. If you start with the podcast, you're locked into the podcast. And if you start with the content, you're locked into the content. The awesome thing about creating a website is that you can do anything that you want. Doesn't that sound so cool? Yeah. So the first thing I want you guys to do when thinking about your website redesign is start with a sheet of paper. Think about the last trip you went on, right? You probably sat there and said, where do I want to go? You didn't go to Expedia and say, where are they taking me? <laughs> right? When I work with clients, I have a nice little one sheet. It says, what do you want your website to be able to do? Right? I didn't say, where are you going to go shop for themes? I didn't say, what does your podcast intro sound like? I have a sheet that says, what do you want your website to be able to do? In our I'm a technology coach, right? So I'm the guy that trains the teachers. And the teacher says, I want to learn about Flipgrid. And I go, well, what do you want your students to be able to do? And that's where it is. Once we get that taken care of, once we have a list of everything, What's the next important thing that we have to think about? And the word's been said a couple times here. It starts with a B. Brand. Logos. <laughs> two. Two logos. Why is it important that we have two logos? Why do we need two logos in the first place? <laughs> one for you, one for your brand. One for you, one for your brand. Um, one for you. Vertical and horizontal. Every, I think, social media gives you a square, right? But this is, you don't want to put a square here, right? You don't want to put a square. You know, so if you look, and this isn't the current one, I'll show you the current one in a second here, but you know, this was two versions ago. You have a square and then you have the banner, right? Because if you look at this, let's go back a couple seconds here. There's your rectangle, right up on the top. That's not a square, that's a rectangle, right? But if you're looking on Facebook or if you're looking on Twitter, you wanna see the square. So I always help, help my clients create two logos. And here's the current version, right? So if you're looking at the left, that could be a square, that could be anything that I want, and then there's the large banner and I, I play with the dimensions as we go from here. So always be thinking in multiple sizes, okay? Always be thinking in multiple sizes. Next thing is now that we have our logo, now we have that focal point. 
Okay, now that we have that center of attention and we have our list of what we want our website to do, now we can go shopping for themes. And I don't want to sit here and talk about different places for themes. I want you guys to show your favorite themes on the spreadsheet. You guys can do that. But the idea is now that you know what your website needs to do, now you can go buy the theme. Do you want a theme that has a builder? Do you want to have a theme that has multiple home pages, multiple sidebars, multiple whatever you need it to do, multiple landing pages? Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay? You gotta start on paper. What do you want it to do? What's the vision? The first thing that I did on, on July 11, 2011 is I created the Apple. Now that I had a vision, it could go down. When I was working with podcast websites last fall, I said, I don't know what this looks like. And they said, well, tell me what you want the website to look like. I said, but we gotta make the new Apple first. And once they gave us the, once we had a design for the new Apple, Literally, the rest of the website fell in for me. Does that make sense? Like, once you have that vision, everything goes in here. So, find a theme that works for you. Okay? Find a theme that's going to be good for you. Ask a few friends for some help here. Does this look good? Is this theme good? Here's a couple suggestions for buying a theme. Number one, when was the last time it was updated? You might really love a theme and then look at it and it says, updated last 2015. Don't buy that one. You might look at a theme and say, well, is it compatible with what I want? Do I, can I get a developer to take that theme to the next step? Is it gonna give me this stuff? Does it work with podcasts? Not every theme does. Does it look good with a podcast player? How much support do they give? Are they gonna give you a, is it gonna be a hundred dollar theme and every year you have to spend 60 bucks for the constant updates or is it, $80 and you get 15 themes from this company. And there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm looking, actually looking forward to seeing what the spreadsheet looks like, okay? So number three is choosing the right theme the first time. How many of you guys have ever done a, a website redesign and you're really, really into it and you go, oh, this isn't gonna work. I have to buy a new theme now because it doesn't quite. So that's why we do everything on paper. Joe's got two hands up back there. And, and trust me, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with 25 WordPress websites and they all had different themes, yeah, that's expensive. But but oh my goodness, right? Because of course one theme was a blog theme, one theme was a podcast theme, one theme was a that was back in WooCommerce was like you know one year old. Now, I love using post-its. If you open up appearances and you go to menus and you try to create your menu, you're gonna be there forever. I love post-its. Whenever I work with clients, we get a big whiteboard, we put a thousand of the, not the small post-its, the big post-its, right? And then you ask yourself the question, self, if I want to find the content about WordPress, where on the menu would I find it? If I want to find the content about this particular subject, where would I find it? And then you ask somebody who has nothing to do with your project, right? Because that's your user. Your, your end user is gonna to come to your website and go, oh, I don't know this. And if the navigation isn't there, you're not gonna get the user, right? If you can't see it, it doesn't exist, right? And then you can realize, well, am I building categories? Am I building tags? Time? Oh. We're good? Awesome. All right, so post-its, we all agree, post-its are our friends. Number one, it's five, it's all about color theory. We've talked about this. We've used, how, many of you, how many speakers so far have today mentioned color, mentioned fonts, mentioned everything? This is the most important thing that I got outside my logo, I'll say this. This is the most important thing that I got for my designer. This is everything that I do right now. Everything has to be these colors. Right? I, 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 I have this thing, and as, as somebody else said, right? You know when your stuff is a shade off because you see it every single day. Look at these colors in Firefox, Safari, in Chrome, on a Mac, on an iPad. I'll go to the Apple Store with the better lighting. All these different things here. Make sure that you know your colors. And it's okay to play around, but definitely don't make these decisions alone. Does this color scheme look good? Right? You might like a color scheme. By the way, I don't know if you guys can tell over the last four years, I'm not the one that dresses myself. So I'm always saying, does this look good? All right? So please make sure that you're always using your colors here. Number three, six here. Don't overdo your multiple sidebars. How many of you guys have themes that have multiple sidebars? Yeah. Interesting. 
Why are multiple sidebars important? How many of you guys have ever gone to a blog post and the content was that, but the sidebar was, okay? How many people actually read people's sidebars? So then why do you do it? Sorry, okay, so two people in the back, right? So on, one of the things that we did, did, did this time when, when recreating TeacherCast was we said, okay, TeacherCast has nine podcasts on Apple Podcasts. So they each need to have their own subscribe. So over here we have our Microsoft-themed sidebar, right? Because when you show it to Microsoft, you want to say, look, it's all your branding. Over here we have another show. Notice, different opt-ins. Here's another show, here's another show. So every single type of content, and this is just a simple plugin called multiple sidebars, right? You just pop that stuff in here. All right, I wanna keep going because I've got a few more minutes here. Honorable mention, things I don't have time, but I really wanna get your ideas on graphics. We already mentioned Canva. Making sure that graphics are big enough, okay? Plugins, don't overdo your plugins. If you have way too many plugins and you have bad web hosts, don't buy don't buy $1.99 a month web hosting, right? Always go out there. Make sure that your website has automatic backup. All right, I got three more things here. How many of you guys are using Google Analytics? How many of you guys know how to use Google Analytics beyond just putting the stuff in there? That's a homework this weekend. YouTube, how to use Google Analytics. If you need help, call me, email me, okay? It's not just put a code, look at a graph. On top of Google Analytics, and Google Analytics is really this much behind Search Console. How many of you guys have ever used Search Console? The hands are not going up as much. Look up Google Search Console. Here's the idea. This is your website. This is Google. Search Console is what connects these people. Search Console is what, is what actually tells Google to go crawl you and how to crawl you. Learn what a site map is. Then when you have both of those things, and I want to see how many hands up here, how many of you guys know, uh, so this is Search Console, okay? All the graphs, all the everything, all the coverage, I know exactly who's clicking, what's clicking where. When I say you click on, like I'm number one ranked for how to use an iPad in the classroom. But I only know that because Search Console's telling me that. Okay? Google Data Studio. How many of you guys are using Google Data Studio? Look it up. It is awesome. And if you need help, call me. Okay? But Google Data Studio is the visual version of everything that you do. Here is Google Data Studio. You can embed this. So whenever I create, here's a, here's a money maker for you guys. Whenever I create websites for my clients, the first thing I do is I create them a data dashboard with all this on. Instead of telling them to go to nine different places, they get this from me. And literally, this is all of their hits, and this is hits per day. But you can break this stuff down into... Um, you know, clicks by, by people, by the middle of there, it's, uh, you know, hits, hits per day. There's a lot of stuff in here. Google Data Studio, it is like website nerd heaven. <laughs> audio engagement, sorry, audience engagement. This is your newsletters, right? How many of you guys are using ConvertKit, using Aweber, using MailChimp? Learn how to use it, right? Reach out. If you have questions, call me or where is she? That was a fantastic presentation. Where, where is she? Where was she? Karen. 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 Yes, I don't even know where she is. Awesome presentation. Reach out, okay? Um, I wish we had like another 25 minutes of all this stuff. Now! Content, content, content. Right? But when you start at the beginning and say, what do I want my website to do? Your mind is focused on the content, right? I want my content to be here, look like this. Got it. Now you start putting this stuff together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. This is the website the way it looks right now. Okay. You come here, you want to do that. I got the three things, we're instructional tech, we're STEM, and we're leadership. But when you scroll down here, this is what's important. How many educational websites are there on the planet? Right now, TeacherCast is ranked 49th. Because of the web, the, 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 because of the, the redesign, because of all of this, because this looks nice, it's all about the eye. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and on behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. Thank you.